Gabon's Jubilee Senate Parliamentary Group, just what could be on the table? Let's get to our top story now. In the process of combating COVID-19, the government has issued a protocol of testing truck drivers at the point of origin to reduce the risk of drivers contracting the dreaded virus. This even as Kenya reported 23 more COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, bringing the total national tally to 672 cases. Andrin Kilebi begins our broadcast tonight. Nearly two months since Kenya reported its first coronavirus case and the number of confirmed cases continue to increase. The ministry now shifting its focus to testing truck drivers who pose a danger in transporting the virus. Each truck driver is expected to be tested 48 hours before they embark on their journey. For those crossing the border, we are required then that if you are traveling from Uganda with your truck upon arrival at the border, you are supposed also to present a certificate from the country that you, are, you started your journey. As long as that certificate is within 14 days, it will be taken as valid. However, we shall still take another sample of verification. In Mombasa County, truck drivers are expected to take a COVID-19 test at Miritini Municipal Dispensary. In Nairobi County, the South Bay Clinic is designated as a testing center. In Migori County, the Migori Referral Hospital will be used, while in Kisumu, a Herao County Hospital is equally designated as a testing center. Other facilities include Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital in Eldoret, Provincial General Hospital in Nakuru, Kilifi KMTC in Kilifi County, Kwale Sub-County Hospital in Kwale, Kituo Chakuchukua Sampuli Mlolongo in Machakos County, Wajia County Hospital in Wajia and Marsabit County Referral Hospital in Marsabit. Foreign drivers entering the country are expected to avail a test certificate that will indicate they have been tested for the dreaded virus. Of the 672 samples tested in the last 24 hours, 24 more people tested positive. 24 of the people who tested positive are Kenyans, while one is a Burundian national. 23 tested positive for COVID-19 disease. 22 of them are Kenyans and one is a Burundi national. The cumulative number of those who have tested positive in the country now stands at 672. The overall number of samples that have been tested in the country to date is 32,097. Isiolo Governor, who represents the Council of Governors in the National Emergency Committee, urged Kenyans to shun away from stigmatization of people who have the COVID-19. This is a disease that anybody can get, and therefore the issue of stigmatizing those who have the disease, the issue of looking at them like they have a mistake or they have a a problem different from other people uh, it should not be entertained in any county. Andrin Kilemi for TV 47. Still on truck drivers, Kenyan truck drivers are now complaining that their Ugandan counterparts and residents are mocking them and stoning them for what they term as quote-unquote transporters of COVID-19. Wanji Sostin now reports. Webuye Matisi Bukembe Kandui Mayanja are among the areas they struck divers again before they continue with their journey. Mm. Days after Bungoma reported coronavirus cases, Governor Wiklef Wangamati urged the residents to limit their conduct with the truck drivers in a bit to keep the virus at bay. We must be careful when we get in contact with truck drivers because I want to have a talk about Mombasa. Hapa sijaona changamoto lolote. Hakuna chochote kabisa hapa. Ile ukiona kama driver hivi amesimama hapa anapiga mafuta yake. Na kama ni kukula atafuta mahali yale aende zake. Hapa hakuna lolote hapa. Wakazi huko wako sawa. Hakuna mtu ambaye ana ignore my driver. Wako sawa kabisa. This truck driver who requested that we do not disclose his identity says that the journey from Malaba to Uganda is full of challenges and the government should take action to end this uncomfortable situation. Uh, kuna changamoto tunazozipata 
Kuna kama sasa hivi kutoka Malaba kuelekea kama Nemli ama unaenda Kampala kuna sehemu hizi simama. Hata ukipita njiani unapata watoto mpaka watu wazima wanaoita corona corona corona. Dereva ametoka api na corona sio kweli. Au sisi wa Kenya ndio tunadhulumika. Serikali wachunguza wajaribu wajaribu kusaidia yani. Maana yake sasa hatusikii hatu vizuri. Maana yake sisi tunawapalikia tunawapelekea mali zao. Kwa nini watuita corona? Ha? Hapo ndio tunaudhika sana. Kwa nini dereva mkenya aitwa corona? Ha? Mkenya ametoka api na corona. Eh? Hapo ndio madereva wanalia sana. Tafadhali ni tuangaliwe. Unashona? Eh? Ukivuka boda kwenda Uganda ndio tatizo. Hilo ndio janga lafaa tuliangalie sana. Tunadhulumiwa sisi. Hapo ndio tunalia. In about 400 kilometers they are not allowed to buy anything nor get out of their trucks to avoid conduct. Baada malaba kuna paki mmoja ameweka hapo. Kama unaweka unaenda Nemli kuna paki mmoja pale Soroti eh? Ambapo hiyo kuna seli wingi pale ndani na usitoke nje. Ukishaingia ndani usitoke nje. Pale ni poneza lala. Ukitoka hapo basi mpaka Nemli. Unaona? Wewe si mama tauni mali popote. Kutoka Malaba kwenda Soroti tuseme ni kama kilomita mia na Kutoka hapo kwenda Nemli ni almost 400. Ni mwenye mrefu. Kwa mbako jiame kwa na vitu vyako kwa gari. Usishuke hata ukojoa ni shida. Edos mama mstuni. Wala ambao kuna watu. Ni hakuna mtu akutuzia chochote. Ni ukitoka malaba ujiambi na kila kitu. Shaka. Hakuna lengine lolote utauziwa njiani. We jiami na mzigo wako. Ya upambane na hali yako mpaka Nemli ama kama ni Kampala haya. However, business operators along transfer highway in Bukembe continue to cast doubt on the measures the government has taken. Chizi mnavyoona Bukembe market is full of trailers. Sasa hizi hakuna any measures imetokea ya kuweza kuona ya kwamba raia wa Bukembe wana tikinga aje kutokana na hili janga la corona. Hata mask peke yake haijaja ikapewa hapa. Apart from team ya Zakaria Baraza Shuma ambayo mnaiona iko hapa Bungoma. Wanje Sostin TV47 Bungoma. Elsewhere, health union leaders have threatened to strike a week from now if the government fails to listen to their grievances. They are, among other things, demanding for allowances and personal protective equipments as they handle patients infected with deadly coronavirus. Aaron Kipkoic with the details. Even as the country fights COVID-19, health workers are up in arms, demanding for what they term as their rights. We all need to be accorded continuous psychological support. Because of the tension going around and the pressure, our guys are even developing depression and other dep depressive disorders. They are giving a week-long ultimatum, failure to which they stage a strike. We fully support the forthcoming industrial action because the employer and our respective government, they are not heeding to what they are supposed to. They are allowing discrimination to continue. They are allowing to expose our members. And this one must come to an end. Among other grievances they want addressed include lack of personal protective equipment and poor working conditions. Lakini ukena mahospitali zetu penye tukuna udumu afya. Hata wale wadumu afya wanaofanya katika jamii hawacha pewa zile tunaziita personal protective equipment however they are warning salaries and remuneration commission SRC to stay away from matters affecting health workers without paying attention to their working condition we are saying SRC should not join in the war to divide healthcare workers healthcare is teamwork in fact, this 20,000 is the, the minimum. In fact, what we are saying, we wanted 40,000. The risk is there. We cannot say that the risk is going to end after three months, for example, because they were saying we are going to pay these allowances for three months. The risk is, is, is going to be there, is going to be there for the last, like, uh, the, as long as the, the infection disease exists. The workers say they will suspend their services if their demands are not addressed in a week's time. And I want to quote the minister who said, if we treat this disease normally, it will treat it abnormally. Now, to the government, if you treat the strike notice given by our respective necks normally, it will treat you abnormally. <laughs> Aaron Kipkoech, TV47, Nairobi. To matters politics and power now, President Uhuru Kenyatta has summoned the Jubilee Senate Parliamentary Group meeting in what looks like a final push to place his allies in strategic positions in Parliament. 
And as Linda Alela examines, a showdown could be brewing with the House leadership expected to be looked at. The fights in President Uhuru Kenyatta's Jubilee Party have been simmering for some time. From the public show of political romance in their first term, the Uhuruto duo seem to be reading from different scripts publicly anchored on their disagreement. The divide in the party, visibly brought out by Ruto-leaning Tanga Tanga fraction and Uhuru-leaning Kieleweka side that have pulled the poles of the Jubilee House into two directions. Jubilee MPs allied to Deputy President William Ruto recently protested changes made to the party's leadership, triggering an unrest in the ruling party. The Ruto wing of Jubilee demanded that President Kenyatta calls for a national executive committee or a parliamentary group meeting. The back and forth between the two sides has its genesis at the DP's 2022 quest for the House on the Hill. Kenyatta's March 8th handshake with arch-rival Raila Odinga, which begot the Building Bridges Initiative, did not settle well with a section of Jubilee lawmakers allied to the Deputy President. This comes amid speculations of a looming cabinet reshuffle targeting the DP's allies in government. The party has not held a PG since the 2017 general election. Linda Alela, TV47. Elsewhere, 161 Kenyans who were stranded in China have finally jetted back into the country. The group of Kenyans arrived Sunday morning even as the government continues to make plans to bring back home those stuck in foreign countries. Andrin Kilemi now reports. 10 minutes to 3 a.m. on Sunday. A Kenya Airways plane of registration number KQ883 touches the runway. The occupants of the plane, a group of 161 Kenyans who are stuck in China for the last two months. I'm so happy because we have been quarantined for like four months, some of us four months, some of us five months not doing any job, not doing any business. We are just at home. George Mbugwa has been in China for the last five years. He has been working as a teacher. However, the spread of coronavirus, which has paralyzed all sectors across board, rendered him jobless. Schools have not returned even today. They have not resumed. Because we teach the small kids, and uh, the only schools which have, res have resumed uh, colleges, universities, and high schools. Bugwa rules out the prospects of going back to China even after the end of this pandemic. His stay in China has come to an end. Oh, I cannot go back. I just want to be home. It is different for Stephanie. Stephanie worked as a trader. She is hopeful that her business will bounce back even after this pandemic. Yes, if they agree for us to go back, we will go back. But for now, I just we just want to rest. For me, I just want to rest and be with my family. Yes. According to Kenya Airways, stringent measures were put in place before passengers aborted the plane. They were required to do a COVID-19 test. So we are happy that uh, they've been able to come because uh, we had to arrange this flight uh, in very challenging circumstances and uh, at very short notice. All passengers aboard will remain in quarantine for the 14 days before interacting with friends and family. Andrin Kilemi for TV47. All right, it's 13, 13 minutes past the hour. It's time for us to take a short break here on Spotlight. We'll be back after this break with more news. world of M-Truck Solutions, your trusted provider for bulk SMSs. We also offer API integrations for all your communication and payment needs. We also provide you with tailor-made payment getaway solution to receive and disperse cash quickly, affordable and securely. Let us expand your reach and connectivity on USSD, SMS and voice today. Call us on 0723 030 030. 
or email hello at mtruck.limited.co.ke. For more details, visit our website www.mtrucklimited.co.ke. When it comes to pimple care, Acne's Creamy Wash contains multiple vitamins and removes excessive oil and dirt. Acne's Toner rejuvenates skin. Acne's Sealing Gel fights bacteria. Use mentholatum acne's for clear and smooth skin every day. Welcome back to TV 47 Spotlight. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Let's move on. Tonight, TV 47 can authoritatively report that the number of HIV AIDS patients who have been seeking medical attention at the Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital has significantly dropped. The drop is attributed to fears of contracting the dreaded virus with already compromised immunity. Calvin Chitwa with the details. The facility has been recording only 10% of its daily patient visits since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. A drastic drop in the number of patients who seek medical attention at the hospital. We actually take care of 164,000 HIV positive people. Here in Amphard Centre alone, in MTRH, we take care of 15,000. They are not coming. We are getting 10% of our patients. It has emerged that HIV AIDS patients are scared to visit hospitals after reports that persons suffering from the viral disease are at risk of contracting COVID-19 owing to their compromised immunity. We meet Fatma, one of the patients who says she knows many people who have been shying away from visiting hospitals owing to fears of contracting the virus. She reveals that HIV patients, especially men, are living in great fear of contracting coronavirus, hence shunning health facilities. Fatuma is one of the HIV patients who has come out strongly to create awareness to among other HIV patients in Wasingishu County. She says many of the patients can't go for a routine checkup at the hospital, posing another danger of their situation worsening during this period of COVID-19 pandemic. Apart from the fear for COVID-19, many of the patients have been hit by economic difficulties necessitated by restrictions aimed at taming the spread of the viral disease. But the head of Ampath Center, Professor Sylvester Kimayo, says they have started putting in place measures to reach out to HIV patients who fear going to hospital because of the fear of contracting COVID-19 at home and giving them medicine that can last for a longer period. Those who are locked down and can't come, the medicine is taken to them. We haven't reached that stage yet. In fact, we are telling some of our patients who are in Nairobi or Mombasa, locked down there, we are referring them to the nearby uh, centers where they are. Calvin Chitwa, TV47, was in Gishu County. Well, thank you, Calvin Chitwa, for that report. Moving on, Kenya Ports Authority Finance Manager Patrick Nyoike has been arrested. 
DPP Nurdin Haji has ordered he be charged for fraudulently paying over 214 million shillings to Nyali Capital Limited, a company in which his wife is a general manager and his brother one of the directors. Joshua Shonsare now reports. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecution says the investigation into the irregular payments were carried out between October 2014 and March 2017. The alleged irregular payment of 214,548,380 shillings that is at the heart of Kenya Ports Authority were made to Nyali Capital Limited. Nurdin Haji says Patrick Wambugu Nyoike, the general manager finance at the Kenya Ports Authority, used his office irregularly to facilitate Nyali Capital Limited without the requisite authority. The ODPP revealing that Patrick Wambugu Nyoike did not disclose that his wife, the general manager, and his brother Alfred Hinga Nyoike of the said Nyali Capital Limited. The DPP wants the six charged in a court of law for conspiracy to commit an offense of corruption, abuse of office, failure to disclose a private interest, and dealing with a suspect property. Among the six people who the DPP once charged are Patrick Wambugu Nyoike, the General Manager Finance, Kenya Ports Authority, Isaac Obunga, Clerical Officer at KPA, Jacinta Wanjiku Wambugu, General Manager NSL, Alfred Hinga Nyoike, the Director, Nyali Capital Limited, Peter Ndichu Kenyanjui, the Director, Nyali Capital Limited, and Nyali Capital Limited. Josh Onsare, TV47, Nairobi. Elsewhere, Kakamega Rainforest was supposed to be a blessing to the surrounding communities, but that seems not to be the case. Local communities claim that Kenya Forest Service warders have turned this into living hell, allegations that Kenya Forest Service denies. Mulindi Kerry with the details. The killing of a 25-year-old man in Shinyalu, allegedly by the Kenya Forest Service warders a week ago, opened the Pandora's box of wounds. The locals intimating what they go through in the hands of the warders. Women from the area decry a wave of what they term as regular sexual harassment by the forest warders. To this family, they vividly remember how they were ambushed in the middle of the night. The man of the house was beaten mercilessly in the full glare of his wife and children. Mimi ndiye muathiriwa ambaye niliamushwa tarehe 22 saa 11 asubuhi na maafisa wa KWS. Nilipokuwa nimelala nikasikia wanakonga mlango nikawauliza ni nani. Kuna mmoja wao alikitambulisha ambaye ni raia anaitwa Joseph Disanya. Kaniambia niko nje na maaskari. Niliwaambia wangoje nivae nguo. Kabla nimalize kuvaa walikanyaka mlango wangu wakaingia ndani. Kaniambia leta mikono nilipo wapewa kaniambia pinduko wakanifungia mikono nyuma. Walipo nitoa inje ya nyumba wakaniulizo wapi maka. Wangina wakaingia kwa nyumba wanaulisa mama wapi maka. Ikawa maka hakuna nilipo wambia ni usiku. Sijumu wanipereka wapi wakaanza kunipika. 
Hakika walinipika nikalia. Nikalia nikaamusha hata ndugu yangu. Nipo kuwa nikilia watoto wangu wakanisaidia kuambia mama hata papa hata toka kwa sababu hatujui chini nini kilichotendeka. The wife was neither spared. She lost his four month pregnancy and now she's reeling in pain. Ule nishikia nilishika msa nikasema mwendi na yeye mmoja mwenye anaitwa Josephat. Alinilipua teke kwa tumbo. Nikasikia uchungu nikaanguka na mgongo. Nikasikia nimeanguka kwa maji. Kuamka nikaangalia nguo nikapata damu inatoka. Kusema ukweli Bila niliambia watu damu inatoka wa kuridhika kuna mmoja anaitwa Jacob Soita na Eric Mambili wanaume niliwaita nikwambie kujeni muniangalie wakakuja kweli mimi nafuja damu wakaiona hiyo damu kupeleka hospitali general nikapatikana niko na mimba imezine wiki kumi na ine na siku tano hiyo mimba wakaniambia kweli wamekanyaka nyumba ya mtoto ndio inafanya damu inadoka kweli niko na uzuni kwa maana mtoto alikuwa anatolewa kipande moja moja kitu nilikuwa ya kwanza kutoka kwa tumbo yangu nilikuwa pacha la mtoto niliona kama ni uchungu sana the local human rights defenders and kakamega county's department of gender have both condemned the brutality and called on government to deploy wardens who can coexist with the community and foster human relationships that will see the protection of the only indigenous rainforest in the region Naitisha wale ambao wanasimamia msitu wakuje waitisha forum ambapo tutaleta community members wale wako across the forest na watu wa forest tukae tujue ni wapi tutakaa vizuri ni sheria gani inatakana tufate kwa maana hata waalifu wameingilia ndani kukucha kuzulumu watu wa area hii kuwanyima haki zao kitu cha pili aliyekanyaka mama, mama na akatoa mimba na aliyepika mzee huyu ajukuliwe sheria kwa maana hakuna hukumu kwa watu wa forest nasema ukipatikana utolewe mimba ama ukadwe hiyo sio sheria tunaita yule mwenye alifanyika naambia serikali usika wao watu washikwe waperekwe kwa sheria na wafungwe kwa maana watu wetu wananyanyaswa wananyanyaswa na hakuna mtu ambaye anawatetea na ninataka kuambia elected leaders kutoka Shinyalu sub county na constituency na Kakamega kwa jumla simameni mtetee watu wenu kwa maana watu hapa wanaumia. Na hapa ambapo tumesimama kuna watu ambao wanajiita community forest guards. Wanatumiwa vibaya na ma- maaskari wa huku. Wanatumwa kuja kusaliti wenzao. Huyu mama mzee wake ni pasta. Mzee sio mwizi. Mzee sio mwalifu. Wanamvamia usiku, wanampiga, wanamkata, wamekanyaga bibi yake mimba imetoka. The lady has been admitted to Kakamega Referral Hospital. Her condition is worsening even as KFS terms the reports of harassment as mere allegations. Mulindi Kerry, TV47 in the county of Kakamega. Thank you Mulindi for that report. Nonetheless, it wasn't waders, it was rangers, forest have rangers. Time for us as well to take another short break. We'll be back with more news after this break. Mount Kenya University takes pride in being an academic giant with some of the best infrastructure, imparting knowledge to the best brains in the country and the region. Our members of faculty are keen to deliver market-driven programs in science and humanities with a keen focus on linkages with relevant organizations. We admit both self-sponsored and government-sponsored students under the Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Service. Join us today and train with the best to become the best. Mount Kenya University, unlocking infinite possibilities. Hey, so Peterson, to me foot wa water. Hey, yawa, pia we. Hey. Tumeachiliwa. Si pia wewe unaweza anzisa biashara yako. Na hii economy venye iko tough sana. But not too tough for mwananchi credit. Tutafanyaje? Si niko na five good cars. 
We can get a quick logbook loan approved within six hours. Nataka kuanziza salon na spa. Ya itatosa. Si tuko na title deeds pay. We can still get more money using them. Get a quick approval within six hours using your logbook or title deed. Do not get stuck. Call me on credit today. <laughs> si nilikwambia. You are a big smart joke joke. Mwana inchi credit. Investor in people. Superbook. This May on TV47, we are giving you more reason to stay at home. You are the chosen one. Because I am your mother. So oh, that's pretty cool. Same-sex attraction isn't completely gone because we're... my root is from God. No, please. You'll see some kind of a, like a smokish thing. Hey, man. Don't forget about the monkey. Hey, <laughs> Boy. Where are we? Right here on TV 47, the home of untold stories. for continuing to watch TV 47 Spotlight. Let's move on to other stories making headlines. Now, Mandera County has been hit by floods that originated from Ethiopian highlands, leaving many families to flee their homes for higher grounds. The county's seasonal river Dawa has broken its banks, submerging houses and crops at its shores. Flood victims now need attention, as Isadin Haji reports on the trails of destructions left by the floods. As flash floods ravage most of the counties in Kenya, Mandera County is not spared. Although the county might be heading to a period of drought, high rainfall upstream deep in the Ethiopian highlands now has an impact at the lower lands of northeastern Kenya, Wajia and Mandera. Seasonal river Dawa is overflowing and the excess water is gushing out to the villages, causing destruction. In the village, we have a lot of water in the village. We have a lot of water watoto hakuna mahali wanalala jikoni iko maji nyumba ya kulala iko maji ile nyumba sahi maji yameingia karibu 34 nyumba si ndio yameingia maji almost uh, 50 in this area kare after one hour anaweza ingia many families who lived in a state of destitution that depended on small scale farming now have no one to turn to they lived at the shores of river dawa which now has broken its banks and left many of them homeless most of the houses here have been submerged and the flood water isn't reducing any moment. The people will have no food for the next uh, maybe th three or four months because they have to wait this water to go off. Mandera County Governor has warned people living at the shores to move to higher grounds as they await aid. The county is already challenged by the fight against COVID-19 and now needs to allocate something to manage this disaster that left many families in dire need. We've put a team together of specialists uh, from uh, different ministries to be uh, carrying out surveillance throughout this period in order to make sure that we're able to respond to critical challenges. Children and women are seen in their houses that already contain water, most of them wondering what is forthcoming. But this situation is alarming since other diseases such as cholera and malaria could erupt to topple the county's health crisis. The country continues to bear the brunt of angry waters, with more than 190 Kenyans already killed by floods. Esadin Haji, TV 47. Still on matters, floods, leaders from the western region now want the government to invoke the compulsory acquisition law in evacuating the residents of Budalangi to safer grounds. As Mulindi Kerry now reports, devolution CS Eugene Omalwa says some traditional beliefs have been a great impediment to the process. While addressing the press in Kakamega, devolution CS Eugene Wamalwa says the government has already acquired funds to relocate Budalangi residents and it will soon roll out the compensation program, a move welcomed by Busia Governor's Hospital Jamong. Bahala tumefika sasa 
itatulazimu tuweze kuhamisha watu hawa tuko na pesa tuko na uh, contractor ako kule busia na uh, shida imekuwa sasa mambo ya compensation na uh, kuhamisha watu hawa na mahali wanaishi hakuna choo kuna chakula nyumba hawezi uh, wakalala ndani kwa sababu maji imejaa kwa nyumba na vitu hawezi wakaishi na wanasema watoki lakini nafikiri serikali kuu kupitia kwa rais wamesema kwamba lazima watoki wamalwa has however regretted that some outdated legal traditions have been a great impediment to the process but Kakamega Senator Kileofas Malala has had the government to invoke the compulsory acquisition law as was applied during the construction of Arora and Kimore dams kawaida wa luya wanaogopa wafu sana wanasema hapa tulizika babu yetu siwezi hama niache kaburi ya babu yangu lakini sasa itatubidi sababu ya climate change we must start changing the way we think even the way we honor our dead even the way we bury our dead lakini waziri kidogo mimi ningependa kusema ile sheria ya compulsory acquisition itumike kwa sababu hiyo sheria inatumika kule eneo zingine ambazo zinafaidika na hizi dams kule Kimarel na Aror dam mbona hawa hawakusumbua ile sheria ili apply kule wakati SGR ilikuwa inapita kutoka Mombasa paka Nairobi wametumia compulsory acquisition laws Mbona ikifika huku tunaenda polepole na watu wetu wanazidi kuathirika. Former Kakamega Senator Dr. Boni Halwale has picked issues with Governor Weekly for Paranya over the floods crisis in the county and now wants him to use his position as the Council of Governors Chair to find a permanent solution to the perennial problem. O Paranya mchezo kando wewe watu wenye walikufanya ujulikane Kenya hii ndio hawa. Kwa hivyo wewe ukikawa pesa Hatutaki tusikie kwamba umepeleka pesa Tanariba, siju umepeleka pesa wapi? Tunataka ukigawa hiyo pesa 12 billion uanzie kaka meka. Sisi tutaleta plangeti na kodoro kwa zile familia ambao zimeathirika. Mulindi Kerry TV47 in the county of Kakamega. Well, elsewhere, a mother's love is the reason as to why the world celebrates Mother's Day on the 10th of each May. Most bonds between mothers and their children are unbreakable. But for Sally Duo, not only the bond between her and her two children, but also that of 47 others is unbreakable. Lydia Gashomo explains why. With excitement, Sally Duo welcomes us to Community Progressive Focus Center, which she founded in the year 2000. More than two decades of existence, this center has taken in more than 1,000 children. Dr. Juana, who you are now Agnes, the Mekua Matro na Kona Hau, ni Kona Hau, Egina, Uta Juana Badai. Just like any other child, these children receive education from this center, and these rooms is where they call home. Many a times, ya kwa bo watoto hawa skizwi, watoto hawa onekani. Na katika ile setup ya African, ni kana kwamba mtoto hajurikani unless pegine kuna jabu limefanyika. For Sally, it has not been an easy journey providing for the 47 children who are at the center. She's armed with hope. Tukona uh, ugumu katika hali ya masomo because hatuna mabu ya, ya walimu. Unasikia sasa hatuna pesa zinaingia. But licha hiyo difficulties, at least they attain a grade za kufanya wana perform vizuri having 350s and above having 400s having university so i'm very proud knowing that it was right and it's always right that we don't judge these children we give them an opportunity besides that these children are a blessing to her the bond between her and the children gets stronger as the days pass by every single day i wake up Na biyaga God sijui ni kitu gani ni tapata na hau. Sababu sa zigine hamuna food, hamuna nini. But unapata ya kwamba ile kukaa wanakaa, ile um, tume impact hizi molos, wameondoka katika ile hali ya kuwa wale watoto wabaya wanajulikana. Sally didn't lack a word for mothers who neglect not only their own children, but also other children. Shida haistahili kufanya mtoto aachiriwe because they are very vulnerable. 
what if only wewe mzazi out of hiyo kidogo uko nayo you start training these children you can live on this small when you're working your way out for these children celebrating their mother is the greatest gift life has so far gifted them mama ni mwingine muhimu na mimi napenda sana mamangu manake amenuwezesha ndio yeye amenifanya nikafika mali hapa si binadamu aditermine ama na decide venye tutaishi ni mungu manake hata mimi time nilikuwa before nifike hapa hivi nyumbani nipate siko na mapenzi ya kutosha so nilipofika hapa hivi nikapata mapenzi ya kutosha Lydia Gashomo TV 47 Well indeed she is a mother that keeps on giving and to all the mothers happy mothers day. All right let me sample some of your feedback now Rolling Rolex Kim Genich says watching from Mombasa Jacinta Kimweli says watching from Bahrain uh, Mikisi Philip watching from Kiminini Kitale um, Wanji Sostin says following from USB All right those are part of your feedback That brings us to the end of tonight's edition of Spotlight. I am Abu Bakar Abdullahi on behalf of the entire team that made this production possible. Bye for now. Enjoy the rest of your viewership. But see you tomorrow on News Deck. Truck Solutions.